how to get the most out of training with beginners and how to beat them in tournaments. Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam and today I want to talk with you about beginners in historical martial arts or historical swordplay that is. And they are a great treasure for us because not only do they help us growing that favorite hobby of ours, but they also bring uh, new ideas, concepts and well, really new movements to test our interpretations against. So, beginners usually have two characteristics which makes them really interesting for any experienced practitioners to deal with. And these are, for once, they know very little about the subject because they're still beginning. They're also not practiced in that art of, your, of ours. And second, they are unpredictable as such. And that unpredictability makes them quite challenging for a lot of experienced practitioners uh, in tournaments to deal with. But let's first focus on the training side of things. So how to get the most out of your training or your sparring with uh, beginners? Well, I think there are two approaches that are really useful here. And the first thing is a constraint-based approach, especially in sparring. So if you want to get the most out of your sparring, you should pick a goal, like a set of technique, techniques that you want to use, a concept that you want to practice, and you basically put yourself into a box and you try to make that thing work. And as you become more predictable that way, and you're basically putting constraints on yourself to not um, vary between all the skills that you got, this predictability makes you actually easier to deal with for the beginner. So in essence, making them better against you. So you need to work harder to make these techniques still work. And by already being experienced, right, you can loosen up these constraints to generate the kind of optimal rate of success. So you know this already from drilling, when you want like your drills to be like challenging, not too easy, but not too hard as well. So you get like that really feeling of a flow into your technique where everything feels, like I said, challenging. So the success rate should be um, around 50 to maybe 80%, but it's not too easy, it's not too hard, all right? Other constraints could be, of course, that you try to go slower than usual, that you try to uh, put other constraints on your fencing using only a certain kind of attack that you uh, try to make your openings a bit wider than usual, just really to, to test the, the edge of your skill, basically. And putting yourself in this challenging zone, basically, um, will make your fencing a lot better in the long run. It will also train you against that unpredictability of the beginners as well. But first, the, the other approach in your training is that you could also, especially in drills, try to be the perfect feedback machine, so to speak. So the, the coach usually plans out the lesson and I would generally advise against on just verbally giving some extra teaching basically to your fellow students and beginners because that generally just interrupts the lesson and usually um, the coach has a much better plan of what verbal instructions and um, cues they have to give. So you actually don't want to overwhelm your fellow students and beginners, but you can present them with a perfect feedback machine. So what do I mean by that? Well, every time they do the right thing in an exercise, they need to succeed well, if they fail to do something correctly in the exercise, well, then they should fail. Or maybe if they do something correctly, but not at the appropriate uh, speed or intensity, then they should also fail. So you as a feedback machine can once again induce that perfect rate of success to your fellow students, to uh, the beginners of the class. Okay, And this is really hard because picking up on every inaccuracy takes a lot of skill in itself. And that's the, an own skill to develop, giving like a proper fencing lesson in practice, which will serve you quite well in the long run, not only with beginners, but also with advanced students and training partners and so on. 
All right, so two approaches. Try to put yourself into a box, constrain yourself on different levels to make really the sparring with beginners still challenging for you. And the other one, be the perfect feedback machine and develop basically your skill on giving fancy lessons. So, but now how to beat them in tournaments. So you just want to win, right? And you need to deal with that unpredictability. And actually that being not predictable is a trait quite a lot of people have if we don't know them already. So here comes some historical advice from Giovanni Antonio Lovino, a historical fencing master from the 16th century uh, out of Milan. And that is against fences that you do not already know. You shouldn't use feints and thereof, but you should actually use like constraining actions, beats, um, overbinds and direct actions to feel them out. Because, especially with feints, which are usually conducted to entice a defensive response of your opponent, you don't really know if they actually pick up on that feint. Maybe uh, it's too subtle for them, maybe they'll do just a panic reaction, they go away, or even worse, they attack into, into your feint, which is of course for them quite beneficial, because in that movement of your feint, um, you're not really threatening them, you might be open, so uh, that's a good thing to do for them. And you don't really know if they react to that feint. So get more on the side of things that you want to constrain them, that you want to use beating actions. And if you then notice that they react to your direct attacks or ways with the white parry or something like that, then work with feints, then work with like these little disengagements, right? So. Try to make them basically more predictable by filling them out. And in that process, don't open yourself too much, right? Okay, another approach in tournaments would be to make them taking a tempo. So make them move. Because if they move in a certain way, so for example, they strike you from their uh, right shoulder, then it's really hard for them, if they strike committedly at least, really hard for them to make any other motion or diversion in that same time. So basically, as they are doing that committed motion, they just became predictable. Okay, and this is the time where you can then, of course, do your parry post or maybe even a counter thrust or something like this. So you actually want to provoke these types of actions. For example, by exposing the left side of your head, which is also something that you can uh, practice in your training once again as well with um, with the beginners in your class where you can test out how big of an opening do you need to give where they are enticed to strike you but you still have enough time because all that comes down here is measure and that's something that especially beginners usually struggle with because the measure Measuring the distance between two opponents is largely dependent on factors like, of course, weapon reach, but of course, it's the speed of the footwork, the speed of the hand. So it's athleticism that uh, plays a role here, not only your own, but also that of the, your opponent. The kinds of movements each uh, of, the, of the opponents makes. So for example, if people still have touts, you can, um, tell quite early what move they're going to make. So all this plays a role here. And as beginners are usually, of course, not that um, that practiced in seeing all these motions, they have a hard time telling where the correct place to stand is. So I would advise you to especially try to work on your footwork, work on direct attacks, work on provoking them to directly attack you while they are still, of course, a bit too far away. So they need to take a too long motion and then you counter strike them right after as they get predictable. All right, so just to summarize, like I said, beginners are a great treasure. Try to support them as much as you can do because one day they will be just as good or maybe even better than you and this is just something that will, will entice you to get even better yourself. 
So it's a win-win situation for both of you. Until next time, take care. And if you want to like to support us on Patreon, we'd be very grateful. Safe training and ciao.